return home to Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium for their first meeting since 1961 with the United States Military Academy. Army West Point comes in running a two-game winning streak after a win last week over Hawaii. Hello, thank you so much for joining us alongside former NFL Super Bowl champion Gary Reasons. I'm Brendan Burke. Well, we've got a throwback for you tonight. We've got to throw you all the way back to the 1940s for a good old Oklahoma Army showdown. Well, this is a couple of teams that they both are storied programs, no doubt about that. Multiple national championships. They've also got Heisman Trophy winners. But tonight we're talking about two teams. One is the most explosive offense in college football, and one gets it done a little differently on the ground. We'll talk about both of them. Well, that most explosive offense is led by Kyler Murray. What has he done that's impressed you so much early this season? Well, he has done a tremendous job of leading this offense, and he does everything well. Most importantly, he's a quarterback. He has the throw it well. He's got very accurate passing. He does a great job getting it to his receivers, and that's what's really impressive about him. Secondly, he's got to be able to run that spread option attack, and he does that effortlessly, and he has wheels. He can't run and go. And thirdly, they actually move the launch point for him. He's not a tall guy, but still accuracy out of the pocket. He's one of the most dynamic players in all of college football. Well, Kyler Murray's for the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week for each of the last two weeks. This is the start of a home-and-home -home series between Army and Oklahoma. Number five, Oklahoma kicks it off in Norman. New contract to keep him part of Oklahoma through the 2023 season. This is fielded at the goal line and a chance to return for Radley Hiles. And he's taken down after crossing the 30. That's a 31-yard return for the freshman. Well, Kyler Murray has certainly put himself in the early season Heisman talks after the first three weeks. Last week was the first time this season he needed to play an entire game and also the first game without running back Rodney Anderson, and he was spectacular against Iowa State. Threw for 348 yards and a touchdown, and for the second consecutive week, led the Sooners in rushing and was named the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week for the second straight time. He just looks like he's having fun out there. He had a lot of fun last week against Iowa State. Good, a good competitive ball game, but... Uh... He did a lot in that football game. He did, he did what his team needed him to do to win that win that contest. Trey Sermon in the backfield, and he gets the first carry of the Watch game. And bumps it out right to the 35-yard line, three yards on the play. Elijah Riley with the first tackle of the football game. Well, it's going to play downhill on this defensive front here for Army. Oklahoma's got a much bigger offensive line going to roll, I think, pretty easily against this Army defensive. If they can run the football and get some holes open, I think this running game can look good tonight for the Sooners. First passing play for Kyler Murray with lots of time and lots of room for Grant Calcaterra. All the way down to the 33-yard line. Well, a nice chunk play, explosive play early in the ball game. Get Calcaterra out. He's just doing a little crossing route here out from the backside and wide open. They do not account for him on the defensive side of the ball. That's a huge play here. This first opening series for the Sooners. First pass for Murray goes 33 yards and puts OU into Army territory. And it's Sermon into a pile and moves that pile. Got nine on the play. An impressive run for Trey Sermon, the sophomore. Well, when we're used to talking about explosive plays, we're usually talking about this guy here, number five, Marquise Brown, and what he's done. Ten catches over 50 yards since 2017. That's an impressive number. Look for him to stretch the field and be a key player in the deep secondary of the Black Knights. Marquise Brown, tonight's Travis Watkins, key player for Oklahoma. They gave Sermon 10 on that carry, and so they moved the chains. It's first down for Oklahoma from the 22-yard line. Sermon again, bounces to the outside and just tripped up by Max Regan at the last moment. A touchdown saving tackle for Max Regan. Well, a shoestring tackle here, otherwise Sermon's going to get this to the house. Regan from his free safety spot doing a good job of getting out there on the speedy, speedy runner. This Oklahoma team is doing it on the ground and in the air. On second and one, he'll keep feeding him. He will get the first down for running into James Nautical. Well, for Army and the West and the Black Knights, I think that their defensive end slash linebacker, rush linebacker, Kenneth Brinson is going to have to show up big here. And he's going to be a key player for them because he's got some tools. When you look at him, he's not your atypical type football player. He's a big body guy with a lot of skill and athleticism. Look for him to try to wreak havoc in that sooner def uh, offensive backfield. That's, that's Travis Watkins, key player for Army. OU in the red zone, 12 for 12 in the red zone this season with nine touchdowns and make it 10. The fullback, Carson Meyer, touchdown OU.
Just one catch all season for Carson Meyer. That was last week for a 30 yards. This one goes from 11 and a touchdown. Well, just coming around the horn there. Just he, they, they just get lost. He gets lost in the shuffle. They're thinking it's run, 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 and Meyer slips right between the linebackers, unaccounted for and untouched. The Black Knights had a couple of errors on that net secondary. It's got to get tightened up. This could be a huge blowout. Austin Seibert with the extra point, and it is seven nothing Oklahoma after the opening drive, which didn't take long. Two minutes and 40 seconds for the Sooners to go from one end of the field to the other. For breakfast at 6:55 in the morning. <laughs> no, no, it's exactly just a right. different experience for the Army West Point cadets as opposed to most of the other college football program this offense is impressive what they do this obviously is a triple option offense and you're going to see a lot of variations of what they do how they block we'll talk about it it'll be fun to watch and see how the Sooners defend it they give us to Darno Wolfolk the fullback he piles through picks up seven yards on the play before running into Kenneth Murray here you see Kelvin Hopkins Jr. listed at 5'10 205 pounds out of Independence High School in Charlotte North Carolina you don't often see a quarterback leading their team in rushing after three weeks of the football season. <laughs> both of these teams' quarterbacks are their leading rushers. That's exactly right. They've both done what they needed to to help their teams win. Big win last week for Army at home against Hawaii. As again, it was the fullback, Wolfolk. And this is what Army wants to do. They want to get three, four, five, six, seven yards on first down. Take second down across the sticks and move the sticks along. It's going to be close to a first down here. Let's see where they spot this football. When they put it down, it's going to bring up third down and just, just inches here. But they want to stay on schedule. That's definitely what an option team wants to do. Don't rely on passing that football. They definitely want to rely on that scramble block offense that they have and getting on those off those defensive linemen who are going to have to get those linemen who are used to doing this type of blocking off of them, which is a little bit challenging, I think, for the defense as we looked at Neville Gallimore there, number 90. He's right in the heart of things, so he's going to be in the mix all night long. D-line was a strength last week against Iowa State. This is third and a foot, and they've got plenty to move the chains here. Yeah, you see Oklahoma. They actually had like five defensive linemen in a down position there. I don't think that that's atypical for a defense to do that against this type of offense, and we'll see that a lot more this evening. Different ways. We talked to Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma, about how they're going to defend this triple option attack, and he said, you know, we just got to change it up. We'll go three down, four down, maybe five down, which is what we saw there, and uh, I, I think that that's going to be the change-up call here. But uh, good drive here for Army on their first uh, possession, and they get a, get a quick first down. There's Mike Stoops in the, in the middle of the booth there. Defensive coordinator, of course, the younger brother of former head coach Bob Stoops. Oh, boy, out the gate. There he goes. Off to the races, Kel Walker. Down to the 40-yard line. Trey Norwood with the tackle after a 23-yard run for Walker. But if you look on the right side of the defensive front, that's going to crash down. And unfortunately, there's a big hole there. Kelvin Hopkins becomes a lead blocker for his pitch back, which is pretty unique in that option attack. So good job there of the Army just being dis uh, deceiving a little bit on how that ball handling works and big play against the Sooners. Well, right now, it's there. Big man, Darnell Wolfolk, team captain, lined up straight behind a crouch down Kelvin Hopkins. Hopkins still has it, brings it to the outside and turns the corner. Hopkins down inside the 20. Monty Bledsoe on the tackle, but an eight yard pickup for Hopkins. You know, you really never know what's coming. I played defense all my career, and I used to hate to run against the guy. Watch the quarterback. Look at him and how far he is down on the ground, almost touching the ground with his tail. You can almost cannot see him if you're a linebacker behind that center. Then he just takes it around the edge. Good blocking on the corner for the Black Knights. There you go. Tenth play of the drive for Army. Wilfo. Trying to get to that first down line. He had to get to the 15. Might be a little bit short. Well, I got to give a shout out to the old ball coach here, Barry Switzer, because I know that he's kind of smiling because this is what he used to run time and time again with his football teams in the 70s and 80s, and it led to the national championship for the Oklahoma Sooners. They know about this offense. Obviously, times have changed and the different philosophies have changed, but uh, there's great story and history here with this type of an offense with the Sooners. And the Oklahoma fans are well aware of this type of offense, but Big 12 defenses, not so much these days. No, sir. Connor Slumka moving the chains again. Just falls forward and gets the first down, and this drive continues for Army. 
two things here. They're converting on third and third down, so they don't have to go to fourth down to challenge them. They had the one fourth down play. But most importantly for Army in this ball game, what are they trying to do? They're trying to continue drives and run the clock. Head coach Jeff Munkin here, he knows that if his offense is out there, he's going to be able to, you know, potentially have a chance to sneak a, a win out against these Sooners if they control the clock, control the tempo, which is what this offense is designed to do. Certainly controlling the clock. This drive started with 12 minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. And they continue to pound it forward. That's Andy Davidson. You know, when we talked to Mike Stoops, you know, we talked to him and he said, you know, there's going to be probably a couple of series that we're going to need to get our, you know, understand what, how they're deploying their, their running game against us and how we're going to have to adjust. It's kind of a chess game. You know, it's a, you're going to do one thing the one time one way and one time another way. But he's going to have to deploy his guys and have some conversations with them on the sideline to be able to understand how they want to attack and how they want to create penetration and disrupt this Army offense. Kalen Holt takes it up the middle, crosses the five-yard line, gets down to about the four, which is where that first down marker is. Yeah, if you saw, every, seen every play here so far, Oklahoma is in kind of a catch phase. What I mean by that is Army is taking the line of scrimmage to Oklahoma and not the opposite. So there's been no penetration. There's nothing to disrupt the timing of this Black Knight option attack. I think Oklahoma's going to have to take some chances, maybe not here in the goal line area, but definitely out in the field to be able to create some opportunities to get them definitely off schedule. Third and one. Right through the middle is Darnell Wolf. Hook. Did he cross the goal line? They've got him just short. First down and goal for Army. When we talked to the offensive coordinator Brent Davis, he said, we're just going to do the same old thing that we do every single week, and that is consistently penetrations. And watch the fullback smash in the middle there. Great job by the right side of the offensive line. Peyton Reeder, number 76. Bryce Holland, the, the returning starter at center. They do a good job of cleaning out the interior of the Oklahoma off the defensive front. They're opening some holes for these running backs. Bouncing off the pile is Wolfolk. He doesn't get there. Wrestled down by Kenneth Mann. Yeah, Mann and Neville that time, they did a good job inside. Being able to pile up that running attack and nowhere to go. And so just bouncing around, Wolfolk trying to break into the end zone. Mann does a good job of pulling him around. He comes off his block and makes a big play for a loss. Bounce back a full yard is what they need here. They put the ball right at the one-yard line on second and goal. Kenneth Mann, the captain, made that last stop. Kalen Holt now the option, and he, excuse me, Connor Slumka, moves the ball forward. Touchdown! It took him a while to find him in the pile. Connor Slumka has the touchdown for Army West Point. Now, Slumka had a, had a rushing touchdown last week against Hawaii, and he's one of those fullbacks that's talented back there, and they'll use him in different areas, but this is an impressive drive by this Army offense. They have just kind of moved the ball methodically down the field, converting on, on third down and fourth down to be able to get first downs and stay on schedule. Brendan, this is what they do. This, they eat up the clock and they score points. Ninth rushing touchdown this season for Army. Three of them belong to Slumka. 119th consecutive sellout here in Norman. The Black Knights march all the way down the field, taking nine minutes and 31 seconds off the clock and evening the score. How do you compete with Oklahoma? They give their offense one crack at it in the first 13 minutes of the game. That kickoff bounces out of bounds, and that'll give Army some, or excuse me, that'll give Oklahoma some good field position here for their second offensive series. Kyler Murray has another wide open receiver in Lee Morris. And Morris is knocked out of bounds inside the 30 by Max Regan. 38 yards on the first play of the series for Kyler Murray. We talked about his accurate passing, and that's exactly what he does. Finds the open receiver, puts it out there for them, just delivers the ball, and run and catch, throw and catch. Murray, C.D. Lamb. Back at the 30-yard line, lost a couple of yards on that transaction. When you look at both of these teams, Brendan, I think the thing that you have to understand, Oklahoma has much superior speed over 
this Black Knight defense. And they're going to be able to run and throw and catch in open space. And it's up to the Black Knights to kind of close the gap and make some big plays and not allow big plays. Uh, but I think that's, that's going to be very, very difficult here because of the speed factor. Inside of two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Murray in the shotgun with Trey Serban nearby. Serban started last week in place of the injured Rodney Anderson. He had a 22-yard touchdown run, an average nearly six yards per carry. But this is Murray off to the races. Dips right on through for a few extra yards down to the 13-yard line. 16-yard pickup for Murray. Now, two of the three things we've just seen here that he needed to do, and that is accurate passing. And we showed that on first down, second down, able to run the football in the spread option offense. Kind of an option attack here from the Sooners and a big run here by Kyler Murray. Each of the last two weeks, Murray's had more than 300 yards passing and at least 65 yards on the ground. Last week, it was 77 on 15 carries. Trey Sermon to the 10. Stopped by Max Regan, the free safety, coming in to make the stop. Well, Sermon's in there, obviously, and kind of heartbroken here for Rodney Anderson, not able to play injury, knee injury that uh, take, took him out of it. But he is the go-to guy now in the, as a running back. Trey Sermon is going to be asked to carry the load in the backfield for the Sooners. They've got a couple other youngsters that are around him, but I think that Trey Sermon, he's going to have to get come to grips with, I am the guy, and he's going to have to build on, a, on what he's learned and, and improve and take a, make some big runs here for the Sooners over the course of the season. He's just a sophomore, all Big 12 honorable mention for Offensive Freshman of the Year last season when he split it with Rodney Anderson. Murray with time. He's taking a shot towards the end zone, and that one in and out of the hands of Carson Meyer. They were looking to the fullback again. Caught the first touchdown pass of his career on the first series, and they went right back to him. Good ball, good throw that time by Kyler Murray. Just could not come down with it. A little bit of coverage there from the inside out of the with the defender. I'm not sure if he got his hand in there. This is just a just a catch. And he's turning around. Really difficult catch by Meyer, but a good ball by Murray. First incomplete pass thrown by Kyler Murray on his fifth attempt, but now Oklahoma will face their first third down. They've converted 19 of 33 this season on third down. And Murray looking at CeeDee Lamb. Touchdown, Oklahoma! Third touchdown this season for C.D. Lamb. Well, he did a nice job of pressing in on the cornerback, Bordeaux, and he got enough space, and Mark Murray does a nice job of reading where he needs to throw it to the outside. A little bit of a press there when he picked up on it late. Watch the camera work here now. You'll see he's going to the inside position, steps away for that ball that's thrown outside where only he can catch it. Good chemistry between Murray and Lamb. Austin Seibert out for the point after. No problem with that. And it is 14-7. Oklahoma, Murray to Lamb. That's happened a few times. Bound to happen a few times more. Lamb, the touchdown. Oh, you, the lead. This one is the final seconds of the first quarter. And the carries for Darnell Wolfolk. And he is sworn. Curtis Bolton, big side linebacker, coming up to make the stop after just a yard. Yeah, the, he's the leading tackler on the team. And, you know, a guy who's a senior, been around this program a long time, Curtis Bolton, did a nice tackle in the hole that time. And that is how the first quarter comes to an end. Baker Mayfield in the house. Oklahoma up 14-7. But can they stop this triple option attack? Army, one for one on their offensive possessions. Not about that. It's not an easy task at all to slow this offense down. Let's see how they do in round two. <laughs> On first down, the toss is to Kel Walker. And Walker stopped by Mark Jackson out at the 33-yard line, a couple of yards shy. Got seven on the flank. Well, well, well executed by Hopkins. Comes around the edge, makes the late pitch there, and gets a good rush. Watch the lead blocker. Boom, right there. Cut block. That's typical for this offense and very legal. Within five yards and downfield in front of the defender. So this offense is kind of gelling early and moving it against this Sooner defense. It was Jordan Asbury who made that block. Kalen Holt looks like he stopped shy as the whole Sooner team piles on. 
Looks like he got one. They needed two on that. So going to bring up a fourth down here. Be interesting to see what Jeff Munkin may do here in this situation. You know, they do go for it quite a bit on fourth down and short because they've got a lot of confidence in that offensive front and be able to get that one yard, tough yard, and we'll see how they, uh, what they choose to do. It looks like they're going to bring in some uh, extra beef perhaps and, uh, and stay on the field and go for this fourth and one. Bring in Darnell Wolfolk. Their primary fullback, who's listed at 5'9", 235 pounds, going forward on fourth and one from their own 34-yard line. The pitch is to Asbury, and a huge lane for Asbury, the first down, and then he spins for some more. Out near midfield, knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Well, the Sooners all committed to a five-down front. They wanted to take away the inside dive, which is what they thought. Look at all the Sooners in there, and the linebackers step up in the hole, and guess what? We're going around the edge. That's what they do, the sweep to the outside, and good blocking out front. Well-executed fourth-down conversion. That's Jordan Asbury. He's a senior. Two catches against Duke in week one only two offensive plays that he's gained yardage on coming into this game he's got some serious yards here to start this one off seven different ball carriers so far this football game for Army. Wolfhook is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage almost a trap play that time bring a regard around try to do something a little bit differently a little delay option inside that that time and did not fool the Sooner defense that was well defended True freshman Ronnie Perkins, the one who first got it, and there's a new crew coming in from the Army sideline. They like to the substitute players. That's also how they call the plays. They bring the play with them from the sideline. Starts up top of the booth, down to the field, and then run onto the field. Quarterback Hopkins will keep it, side steps, and then is driven to the turf by Troy James after a three-yard game. Yeah, true little bit of a veer option look that time by Hopkins coming down the line of scrimmage. No dive back, just kind of keeping things out in front of him, truly reading that defensive end into the outside and well defended again by Oklahoma. So they got that part of it down. So this is what Army does not like, and this is good for Sooners, the Sooners defense. Third and long, third and seven, almost eight yards here that they're going to have to get. Are they going to throw the football? Army is much improved in the throwing game with Kelvin Hopkins throwing ability what is normally a running down it's Glenn Coates and he won't make it they try to get Coates coming back against the green stops short well short on third down well you're going one way and trying to commit the uh, the defense to the other just too much speed here from this Oklahoma defense and you see having to make him change direction Third, fourth down for Army. They've converted the first two. Back to pass is Hopkins. Lots of time. Someone to throw to. Kel Walker. Conversion on the first pass of the game for Army. 13 yards and a first down. Well done that time. Kelvin Hopkins had a little pressure in his face, but he had to wait, had to wait for his receivers to come open. And this is a crossing route all the way across the field. Look at the delivery on that ball with pressure in his face. That's a big time throw by the quarterback. Throws it out there and he gets pressure and smacked by this defensive line. No doubt about that, that he took a big hit from Amani Blitzer. Drive continues. This is the 12th play of it. Wolfhook stacked up at the line and driven backwards. They'll give him a yard on the play. Mark Jackson made the tackle. Yeah, rolling some guys through here on the defensive front here. Those other guys coming in, I'm seeing how they're deploying in this Oklahoma defensive front, trying to get some fresh fresh guys in there because this offensive attack just keeps coming. And you know, when Jeff Munkin came to, went to West Point and he's been there now for the, his fifth season, he kind of had to flip the mentality and understanding of, of how to get these guys to play this type style of offense and commit to it. He's got a lot of buy-in and he's had the most wins the last couple of seasons than they've had in recent history. Walker on the pitch. And a good stiff arm, a flag flies. A good run there along the sideline by Kel Walker. Stopped by Kenneth Murray, but we'll have to check on the penalty marker. It's only been one penalty in the game up to this point. 
holding defense number 91. Half the distance to the goal penalty from the end of the run. First down. Dylan Famatau guilty of the hold. And that's a costly penalty against Oklahoma. That's diff different. You know, a defensive lineman typically is not going to be uh, called for an interior holding penalty. So I'm not sure our, we were able to find that hold. But regardless, oh, Army now set up well at the seven yard line here with the uh, fresh set of downs. First and goal coming for Army. Jalen Holt in the backfield for Kelvin Hopkins. And it's Hopkins. Driven into the turf. Kenneth Murray. Helped out by Khalil Houghton. They both got him after a yard. Good job that time reacting on the defense and the linebacker just flowing, coming up there. And Kelvin Hopkins trying to kind of get his team going the right way. After just a yard. Second and goal from the six. This is play number 15 on this drive. Hopkins. Pitch wasn't there. He had to keep it. He got to the five. Another yard picked up. Well played that time by Oklahoma. They had a hat on everyone that they needed to, which is assignment football when you play defensively. Take a look here. They're going to take on the blocks, get on everyone, and but nowhere to go there as the quarterback pulls out looking to get around the edge and good game tackling that time. So third down here, five-yard line, and are they going to toss the ball, run the ball? They've, they've done both, so on this drive at least. Army's only converted one of the three third downs they faced on this drive, but they converted the other two on fourth downs when they needed to keep the drive moving. Hopkins fake the pitch and he'll get into the end zone. Kelvin Hopkins from five yards away, touchdown Army. He sold it, didn't he, Gary? Well, he sold it, and also the alignment by Army was the first time that they did this this year. Take a look here. They've got a tackle over alignment, which means that they reduced the tight end on the far side with an extra lineman on this side, one more than the Sooners could account for, and the great fake here by Kelvin Hopkins does a nice job of, hey, there you go. No, I'm not going there. I'm going inside, young man, and, and into the end zone. So excellent drive again here by Army. Again. First one, two minutes and 40 seconds. The second one, two minutes and 36 seconds. Very different from what we've seen. And a chance to return for Brendan Radley Hiles. Hiles to the 30. And then he got popped at the 34 yard line. Valen cool. Murray is going to load it up and find an open receiver, A.D. Miller. 14 yards and a first down. Yeah, A.D. Miller was one of the players that Coach Riley talked a lot about. He said he thinks he's coming on. He's going to be another good part of that stable of receivers for this Oklahoma Sooner bunch. You got C.D. Lamb. We know what he can do with the big hand, with the big, the great catches that he can make. And then obviously with Marquise Brown taking the top off of the defense, they're looking for him to be a great complimentary receiver. Yeah, Lamb and Brown coming into the game, 31 catches and five touchdowns. The rest of the wide receiving group, 28 catches and four touchdowns. This is the running back, Trey Sermon, trying to fend off a tackler, driven yeah, out of bounds on the Army side of the field after a four-yard gain. You know, I do think the Oklahoma running attack changes just a little bit without Rodney Anderson. And, and what I mean by that is these backs that they do now have in the in their backfield are able to run out there, they're not as big and powerful. So going to be a lot more stretch-type running, a lot more plays to the outside. I don't think they're going to have as much power gain up the in, on the inside. But uh, we'll see how that unfolds throughout the rest of the season. Urban stays is the option in the backfield for Kyler Murray. On play action, a bullet reaching behind him was Grant Calcaterra to haul that one in. Another chunk taken up 15 yards before Max Regan made the tackle. Well, this is a pinpoint pass, and Kyler Murray does a nice job of reading it. Calcaterra, he knows he's going to have him on a quick little inside slant there, right over the linebacker's head, and bingo, good throw and catch between he and Murray. Calcaterra trying to pick up as the tight end, replacing Mark Andrews, now a member of the Baltimore Ravens. The team last year that was a play away from playing for a national championship. Alan Murray would load the 
time. He'll just take off. Colin Murray showing off the wheels. He'll take it. Touchdown. If you give it to him, he'll take it. 33 yards. Well, I said at the top of the show, I think he can be the most dynamic football player in college football. And what he does, throwing the ball as accurately as he does, but when things break down, he has this ability, and it's explosive. And when he makes a move, he can get that motor moving. I tell you, great job by Kyler Murray exploiting the defense with a big touchdown. Austin Cyber comes out for the extra point. And Oklahoma, three possessions, three touchdowns, 21 points. Kyler Murray doing it with the legs this time. Oklahoma back on top here late in the second quarter. Yeah, I think they'd be happy to run the clock out without even scoring because they know they're going to get it to start in the third quarter. So Oklahoma elected to take the opening kick, so it's going to be back with Army uh, to start the third. What's the best starting field position in the game for Army? Less than a minute to work with, and Darnell Wolf, excuse me, Kelvin Hopkins keeps that football and gets nine yards as we're inside a half a minute to go. Yeah, a little hurry up here. They're not going to just call a timeout. They're going to get hurry up, 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 up and run a play. Clock is still running. All out of timeouts here for Army. And Hopkins will throw it out of bounds. He thought he would have a little bit more time than that. And he turned around and there was a Sooner standing waiting for him. Kenneth Mann came in. And as soon as Kelvin Hopkins turned around, he had to throw the football. Well, this offense isn't designed and built to, to work with a passing game in mind because they just don't have the receivers. And typically, they're not going to work on the types of pass protection blocking with their offensive line that's going to work for them, but uh, they do it in limited circumstances as they, as they look like they're doing here from the shotgun. On third and one, they'll run it. Hopkins will get the first down as the clock runs down to six seconds. Curtis Bolton, the tackle. Stop the clock on moving the chains, and they'll reset it here, and... Taking a shot. Kel Walker. Kel Walker, did he step out of bounds before we hit zero? He did not. That'll be the final play of the first half. Most of Let's see right now what what uh, adjustments Oklahoma's defense has made to stop this on this on the offense. Not reduced right there. A lot of movement and flags come in and hit in the backfield was Kelvin Hopkins by Ryan Jones, but three different flags thrown on the play. You heard me talking. Illegal shift, Army. Two backs were moving at the snaps at the same time. Penalties decline, second down. Well, the backs were moving, but you hear me talking reduced. What I mean by reduced is you're taking a defensive end line of scrimmage. Watch them. They're going to move down inside. These arm, the, their, the defensive linemen are coming down for Oklahoma inside to take away those gaps. And that's a little adjustment that they're making to take away those quick hitters that Army's doing with that fullback. They declined the penalty because the result of the play was a four-yard loss. So second and 14 for Kelman Hopkins. And Army West Point. Arnell Wolfolk, the fullback. On the option. Del Walker steps out of bounds at the 24-yard line to pick up a three. And then back to the original line of scrimmage. And good job, I think, by Oklahoma kind of taking away the inside game and then allowing the linebackers to flow and getting out there to the outside. And that's pretty well defended at that time. So a couple of downs here, you're seeing that Oklahoma's making some adjustments to take away the inside run game and, and then rally into the football on the outside. Oklahoma, a chance for a three and out here to start the second half. Crowd trying to help them along. Third and 11. They run it up the middle, and Oklahoma 
Comes up with a big stop to set the tone for the second half. Well, Kurt, Kenneth Murray and Curtis Bolton, they've been tackling machines. In that first half, Kenneth Murray had 14 tackles as a linebacker, and Bolton had, had 10 himself, so they had 24 out of 36 plays. They were in on the tackle and shows up there again. So Kenneth Murray having a big night there for that Sooner defense, and he's all around the football. Only one punt for each team in the first half. And the second half starts with a punt in the direction of C.D. Lamb, who will back up and take it at the 26-yard line. And he makes it to about the 33. And Kyler Murray will get a crack here. Back on the field, 48-yard punt. Last week, a 37-27 win over Iowa State in Ames, avenging last year's only regular season loss. For Oklahoma, of course, Baker Mayfield was the quarterback back then. Tonight, he's a spectator here in the house watching Trey Sermon. Takes it out to the 40-yard line. Eight yards on first down for Trey Sermon. Sophomore who also had offers from Alabama, Ohio State, and Michigan chose to come here to Oklahoma. And he's a good quality player. There's no doubt about it. And it's, it's his show back there right now in the run game. So... Trey Sermon, hopefully he's going to stay healthy to be back there for Oklahoma and give them that, that running attack that the, they need to complement Murray in the passing game. Murray lofting it for Marquise Brown, and that one was put up there and intercepted by Mike Reynolds. Just the second interception thrown this season by Kyler Murray. Played in 1946, 1959, and 1961. Those are the previous three meetings between Oklahoma and Army. Kel Walker gets out near the 30-yard line. Just a yard for Walker, who has been their most effective runner today. That was his ninth carry, closing it on 70 yards today. Well, he and Kelvin Hopkins have done a good job of just in, in relationship on that pitch, and he's gotten the benefit of some good pitches and getting into those seams. So it's a speedy runner when he gets that ball in his hands. Very different game plan this week. And opposed to what we saw last week against Hawaii. Army with a 28-21 win over Hawaii. Kel Walker didn't carry the football at all. This is Kelvin Hopkins. Getting three yards before Kenneth Mann made the tackle. Yeah, we talked about Kenneth Mann at the top of the show. Trying, trying to think that he's going to be big on the edge there to set the corner. Take care of that option. Actually, look, when that quarterback comes around, he's going to be in, in the thick of it. And Kenneth Mann, one of the quality defensive ends in in the in the big 12 this season and uh, i think he's going to have a bright season there's no doubt about that he's got a lot of athleticism and the skill is there and he's a playmaker and against any other team you'd call this an obvious passing down we'll see what kelvin hopkins has in store he will throw on third and ten lots of time can he find an open receiver he can a first down complete to kel walker Walker got the first down that was brought back on the penalty. Well, I and promise he got this one for 14. Yeah, so Kel, the route that he runs is kind of a circuitous way to get about 12 yards. And Kelvin Hopkins just has him come back to him and got a couple defenders out there, and he had taken them back, and then he just ran back towards the line of scrimmage, which is what he did to get that first down and catch. He just made himself available to his quarterback. Good protection that time by the Army line, not allowing those defenders to get to their quarterback. And uh, pretty impressive pass blocking, so to speak. Late pitch goes to Walker again. And Curtis Bolton sniffed it out, dropped him for a loss. Now, good numbers that time that, that for Oklahoma defensively. They kind of scrape and they slide well to the outside. You see the inside linebackers flowing. They take the quarterback, and there's enough defenders there to make that play easily. Curtis Bolton, just another tackle on the night. He's having a big night. Number 13 for him. That one goes for a four-yard loss. But if you're Army, their coaches talked to us about body blows this week. You just keep running after them and try and wear down these defensive players for Oklahoma and hope that as the game goes along, you can get a little bit more out of every play. This is Darnell Wolfham. Kenneth Murray approaching 20 tackles. Stops that after four yards. 
Well, Oklahoma, you see the large line splits here. Look at this split right here and right here. That is different than what they've been doing. So they're opening those things up to give their run game inside a little more leverage and inside running ability. Typically, they're not that wide, those splits. So that's another variation that Army is doing in this ball game to confuse the defensive linemen for Oklahoma and open up lanes for their running back. Third and 11. And Kelvin Hopkins slides through and picks up the first down. It looked like he was surrounded by Sooners, and he comes out with 12 yards. Well, what did Lincoln Riley tell us? That was the must in this ball game for their defense. They have to tackle. Can't block tackle. You can't throw a shoulder in there, and that's exactly what the defenders do from Oklahoma. There's just power bang right there, and nobody tackles and pulls him to the ground. So really a poor job there of wrapping up by the defenders from Oklahoma, not getting that quarterback to the ground. They had him bottled up to slow down and negate the first down, but a great effort by, by the quarterback, Kelvin Hopkins. Tackling a problem last week against Iowa State as well. Quick play here to Asbury. Jordan Asbury with the wheels trying to stay on his feet and again he probably picked up four or five yards after the first time he was touched Parnell Motley finally yeah. ripped him to the ground well drive and determination that's what is is at the heart of this Army football team and you know they're all playing together they're all in a band and they all do the same things they're all moving forward they're gonna keep moving it forward and that's what these running backs do with that effort and that quarterback with his effort it's just all throughout this football team and Jeff Munkin is He's got to be proud of his guys because they bought into what uh, that teamsmanship is all about, and it's on display here tonight. Slumka. They'll get another first down and another play made defensively for Kenneth Murray. He hit a career high in tackles last week with 10. He's about to double that. My goodness, he's all over the field. You know, he's, he's, he's almost in on every single tackle, and he's a, he's a very rangy linebacker and a guy that they're going to need to have and play well throughout the rest of this season. And you know, they, they've, they've had some great linebackers here at Oklahoma, and he looks like he's a guy that has the athleticism to be a good one as well. 12th play of the drive coming here for Army. This is Kelvin Hopkins to the 30. Give him four on second down. Well, the clock continues to tick here, and, you know, it's it's kind of what this Army team does. They eat up time. You know, we've talked about that before. But it really is, uh, you know, something that they want to do. They want to stay in a close ball game and stay uh, stay on top if they can, if they can just continue to get drives and not make mistakes. The only turnover in this ball game was the one that uh, was the interception by the Army defense of a ball that was, you know, not communicated well between Kyle Murray and Marquise Brown. Wolfoot brings it across the 30. The drive approaching its eighth minute for Army. Again, the half started with a three and out forced by the Oklahoma defense, their best defensive stand of the football game. And then after an interception from Kyler Murray, another opportunity for Army's offense to get back on the field. Mike Stoops doing what he can from up in the press box. Yeah, he's up there doing it. He's trying to talk and think and figure a way out how to how to make slow this thing down. And what he's needing really is to get a turnover. I think a turnover would be huge here for Oklahoma. If they could pull that ball out, get these guys off schedule, it would give them an opportunity to do what they needed to get the ball back to the offense. Arnell Wolfhook. Yard by yard, picking up four more this time. And he's a yard shy of the first down. You know, Wolfick is an interesting story because, you know, he's a he's a running back and played linebacker in, in, in high school. He was a three-time All-State linebacker as a full now He's a fullback here and a captain of this team, and he's just one guy that they roll in and out of there, but a, a guy that they definitely can count on. Fourth down doesn't mean a whole lot to Army. <laughs> no, it doesn't. They're three for three so far on fourth down. And they go over again. The sledgehammer wolf hook is in the backfield, but Kelvin Hopkins will take it himself and pick up the first down. You know, one of the attributes that you want in an option quarterback is the ability to make the right decision. Thanks, CT. They're trying to get a stop here on defense as Hopkins takes it to the 15, lunging a little bit more. Stopped by Mark Jackson, but a seven-yard gain for the quarterback. 
Well, just clicking around here. They fake it inside here. Not going to give it to the running fullback in there. Takes it around the edge and cuts inside of one of the linebackers. And Bolton just overruns him just a little bit. But a good heads-up play inside there for the Sooners just to negate a touchdown because that was, there was nobody back there. Second and three from the OU 13. Hopkins tried to cut back. Curtis Bolton wasn't fooled. He'll just hang on to him. Let everybody else come in as well until the play is blown dead. Well, that was set by the defensive end on that side. They're not allowing the, them to win that corner and that edge. So take a look here right in front at the tight end position, and that's where they kind of slow things down, and good job coming through there. Just Curtis Bolton to make that tackle. Yeah, he's he's imploring the fans get a little little loud in here, which uh, which they can do. Wolfuck gets the first down and trying to push for an extra yard. He gets down to the six yard line. Kenneth Murray is down. Now getting help back up there after making his 21st tackle of the game. But first and goal. From now the three-yard line. Touchdown. Andy Davidson and Army. On a drive that started a long time ago on an interception from Mike Reynolds. Army an extra point away from pulling even with Oklahoma. Well, a very competitive drive that time by Army. Marched it down the field and just workmanlike. Everything that they did seemed to be just getting positive yards and positive outcomes. But Duke has turned out to be a very good football team this season. So that is the quality opponent that they've had. And, and how well they won the last two weeks, especially against Hawaii last week, shutting down a, a powerful passing attack offense. Uh, it's pretty impressive. That was a 19-play drive. Took 10 minutes and 47 seconds. That's nearly two minutes longer than OU has had the ball in this football game. Ridley Hiles from the five-yard line. Trying to cut up field, got to the 20, and then got sandwiched. We haven't yet started the fourth quarter. There's a carry for Trey Sermon, and Sermon... Dragged down by the foot by Max Regan. Good hold that time on the right side of the offensive line for Oklahoma. Sermon kind of picks his way through there, gets seven plus yards. Sermon joined in the backfield by true freshman TJ Pledger. This time it is Sermon again. Sermon gets out to the 44 yard line. Trey Sermon starting to get going. Elijah Riley on the tackle, but a nice big hole. Yes, it is. I think the defensive end stepped out. They thought he was going to have somebody come loop underneath him, but uh, good job of reading that by Sermon, getting inside of that block and making a big play. It's a 17-yard carry for Trey Sermon. This time, they'll throw it to Pledger. T.J. Pledger picks up the first down. Tackle made by Jalen McClinton. But the true freshman T.J. Pledger gets 12 on the catch. Yeah, it was free. It was a uh, man free that time, which means they had defense. Defensively, it was playing man coverage with one free safety. But nobody accounted for Pledger. He was unaccounted for, and that could have been a much bigger play for Oklahoma. Sermon. Finds some space, stumbles and stays upright to the 20 before he's knocked out of bounds by McClinton. 23 more yards for Trey Sermon. Now he's finding the holes in his offensive line as making some holes for him. You see the good blocking in there, the benefit for Sermon and running, and he just stays on his feet, unable to get him down to the ground, and McClinton having to come over from a safety position and knock him out of bounds. And time will run out. On the third quarter, Trey Sermon starting to get going. Oklahoma trying to march right back down the field to take back the lead. 
Oklahoma starting to run the football now, keeping the, their offense on the field, not as quick as they pace as they've been previous their previous drives, and I think it plays to their advantage. You almost have to run the football, give your defense a break at this point. Sermon starting to get rolling here on this drive. He's got 84 yards on the ground of the game, 46 of them on this drive in his last three carries. He'll feed it to him again. Sermon looking for more. Inside the 15, down to the 10-yard line. A powerful run by Trey Sermon goes for 11 yards. And you can tell when a player's feeling it. He's feeling it right now that he's got a pretty quick step right now, and he understands that he's got the moves to make and power football. He just It's all coming to him right now. Trey Sermon's having a good night. Oklahoma knocking on the door from the 10. Give it back to him. Down to the five. Sermon now the featured back after the injury to Rodney Anderson, who suffered his third season-ending injury in the last four years. And they're going to ride Sermon. He's the only running back who has carried the ball today. Now at 100 yards on the day, divided between his 13 carries. Well, they don't have that many opportunities offensively to carry the ball. They haven't had as many plays, so we're just about 30 plays here for the Sooners. Thurman tripped up at the one. Good hold that time across the right side. Just a quick handoff in there, and Sermon reads it in there. And Murray just reading it across. Got a fly man in front of him, and good job by the offensive line. Just manhandling this. A little bit undersized, but powerful, I think, uh, on the front four. Third down and goal from the one. They bring in a lead blocker for Sermon, and Sermon is just short. Just short. Try to go big package, heavy from the outside, almost an eye formation and, and powered in there. Good penetration and get up, getting low by the Army defense. Getting under the pads of the offensive line by of Oklahoma. So here we are on fourth down and short. Little indecision to hire on the Army defense. Substituting the player, but uh, everything squared away. Fourth and goal from the one. For Kyler Murray in Oklahoma. Trey Sermon. Into the pile. Not going to make it. What a goal line stand here for Army on the road at Oklahoma. Fourth and goal. Can't get it in the end zone. Time all season on 15 trips into the red zone. Oklahoma comes away with zero points. And they'll just push it forward with Kelvin Hopkins. Try to get a little breathing room between the ball and the goal line. Yeah, it's a smart play there. Just kind of move it forward, and that's what this Army offense does anyway. They're just kind of kind of rooters down there, those offensive linemen. And, you know, we haven't talked a lot about that offensive line of Army, but they've only got one returning starter, which is their center, and that's Bryce Holland, number 65, who's the center. He's kind of the leader of that group. Everyone else is, they've only started this season, and they've come together pretty darn well over the last few weeks, and they've showed well tonight. Hopkins will pitch it back into the end zone. Kel Walker gets out of the end zone and gets out near the eight-yard line. Wow, a dangerous pitch. Almost never do you want to pitch it backwards towards your end line and towards your goal line. And this pitch is actually a little bit behind the, the, the fullback here, the running back. Catches it nicely, though, and just avoids the tackle. Good pursuit that time from the inside out by Oklahoma. Now they've got a chance to bring get a stop here of their own with third and short, third and one and a half to go, I think, for Army. Huge third down here. Yeah, and they've got to pull up, get a stop here. Oklahoma does. And they go up the gut with Wilfolk, and he gets the first down. 235 pounds. The sledgehammer, one of the two sledgehammers that they can roll in there, and he just pounds his way through. Watch the left guard there. Great block. Good push that time by Jackson Deaton. Young man from Frisco, Texas. Did a good job getting some room in there for 
the big fullback Wolfolk and first down and they're clicking again. You know, believe it or not, uh, this Army team is a young football team. There's a lot of young players that are out there and win or lose here. Coming into Oklahoma, going toe to toe with this big program late in this ball game. This time nowhere to run. Well, I was about Hopkins. yeah, I was about to say it's kind of a character builder for them, but you know I think that you know with Jeff Munkin and his attitude said you know we're not here to you know get attitude and, 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 and have any uh, build our confidence. We want to come in here and win. You know that's that's their mentality that they bring. That's Brent Davis. Offensive coordinator it got the towel out now. Yeah, he's uh, he's working it. It's only 65 degrees actually nice and cool today Couldn't tell from that shot He's sweating Pitch to Jordan Asbury and Asbury with Kenneth Murray draped on his back Gets the all right. He's marked just shy of the first down about a yard shy give him six yards on the play well Kenneth Murray has been all over the field, and the young man is just almost wore out. He's walking back inside, and just watch number nine here straight from the inside out. He's the inside linebacker coming down the line of scrimmage, and he's just going to continue to play, and that's a big tackle coming inside out. He's, he's about out of gas. Well, that's a record break. That's his 25th tackle, a new school record. 24 had stood since 1965. Oh, now Wolfolk still on his feet. There's a first down. Curtis Bolton approaching a school record territory as well. Ten-yard gain for Wolfolk. Now take a look here. You're going to see this option right at you, and this is what Murray is dealing with. He sees the fullback there and just can't make the tackle. Bolton finally does get him down on the ground, but Wolfolk gets a nice gain here. You know, this is a relentless attack. you got all these runners coming into the game for Army, and they're just retooling. And and they're trying to keep more fresh bodies on the field. And they roll in five different fullbacks. Kalen Holt in the backfield now. Late pitch into the hands of Holt. Right on the sideline, knocked out of bounds at the 46. Three yards on the play for Holt. Talk about the young guys. He's not one of them playing in his 40th career game here tonight. Played linebacker in high school. A lot of these fullbacks played linebacker in high school. Kalen Holt played linebacker for his year at West Point Prep. He's also the long snapper and the punter that year. <laughs> yeah, and Kalen Holt, he, he's a personal guy, obviously, and you know, he's probably played a lot of football for this football team and the guy that they know they can rely on. Holt's still in the backfield. He's from Hawaii. He enjoyed last week's yes, win. Yes, he did. Proposed to his girlfriend on the field after the win against Hawaii. This is Kel Walker. And Walker stays on his feet for a few more yards. Finally down at the 41, courtesy of Mark Jackson. But another first down for Army. Well, this is a precision offense here. Look at the quarterback, Kelvin, come around here. And he just does a nice pitch. As soon as the defender gets in front of him, Kelvin Hopkins pitches it out there. And Kel Walker does a nice job of continuing to run that football. Clock continues to move as well inside five and a half minutes. Twelfth play of this drive. Wolfo stood up after reaching the 39 by Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray again. And the clock continues to run here, but uh, the official has stopped and it was a uh, ball came out. Ball came out. out. They ran it back for good measure, but ruling on the field that the ball where that Wolfolk was down. They're going to get this thing set and the field, forward progress drew the whistles and so the ball came out after the fact. And they give him just across the 40 yard line. It'll be second down and seven to go. <laughs> Andy Davidson straight behind Hopkins. And it's Hopkins. He took a pop there as he crossed the 35 yard line. Six yards hit by Ronnie Perkins. True freshman. An Army All American. You know, some, St. Louis. Something we haven't seen really from the Oklahoma defense is a blitz opportunity, a chance to kind of run through there and disrupt and try to do something 
either from the outside coming in or either from the inside, almost kind of standing and trying to uh, just catch and, and receive this Army, deep, Army offensive attack. No tackles for loss in the game for Oklahoma as Wolfolk will pick up the first down, getting to the 30. Five more yards for Darnell Wolfolk. And the clock continues to tick. We talked about this drive potential late in this ball game and what that may mean for Army and the total time left in this ball game. We're just about four, about four minutes to go here in this fourth quarter. And excellent clock management, I think, right now by Army taking against this against Oklahoma. They're taking this down to the last second on that play clock because they're right now and potentially getting into field goal range. Go on the pitch. And this time they stopped him back behind the line of scrimmage. Asbury was stopped by Parnell Motley, the quarterback, to come up for a two-yard loss. Good job. Sees an outside play. Motley does a nice job of coming back across the line of scrimmage and making a negative play, a, a good negative play, and a needed one by Oklahoma. So getting the cadets off schedule just a little bit here, coming up at second and long. Now the fourth drive tonight for Army of at least 15 plays. Hopkins jams on the brakes, and then he is swallowed. Mark Jackson, the first one on him. Oklahoma needed a couple of stops, and they've got him on back-to-back -back plays. Yeah, a couple of negative plays there in a row, taking that ball back, definitely out of scoring range here. Good job in pursuit here by Oklahoma, and you see Murray, who's played his heart out tonight on defense as a linebacker, makes another huge play for that defense. Now you're starting to feel that home field advantage. Yeah, the fans are getting into it here. Towels are rolling on the sideline. The fans are up, getting loud. Oklahoma's won more Big 12 titles in the last 19 years than its lost home games. The defense for Oklahoma trying to make a stand. 21 all, 223 to go. Well, the fans are in it. They're trying to support their defense. A couple of defensive plays here made some negative plays for the defense. Back in Army up. So what does Brent Davis, the offensive coordinator, call here on third and long with Army in the plus side of the territory? Throw it or run it. Third and 14. Back to passes, Hopkins. Hit as he throws. It's intercepted by Kenneth Mann. Well, the two negative plays set this all up because they got into third and long, and that's not a comfortable position for Army to be in offensively. Good job by the defense. Tipping that ball, big play by man coming up with the interception. The Sooners now have a chance to win the ball game. That interception was on the 17th play of that drive for Army that ate up 10 minutes and six seconds. Kyler Murray tucks it, runs, goes down to the 45, and then he took a heavy hit. Well, you see the explosive capability of Kyler Murray. Things break down where he's not able to throw the football and enough gaps there watch his hit he takes at the end and that's a good shoulder contact up into the chin area there for from the safety it's eliza riley delivered that hit on murray sermon now to murray's right and they'll give it to him trey sermon gets to the 40. yeah trey sermon's had a pretty good night here he's probably approaching 100 yards or so here in this ball game and really has come on here late in the second half, moving the ball down the field. They couldn't punch it in against this Army defense, but that last drive they had was a good long one with him with a, a lot of yardage. 106 for Trey Sermon. Most of them here in the second half. Clock running down to a minute 20. Tyler Murray. Loads of time, nobody open. He's going to take off. Murray gets the edge, tiptoes out of bounds at the 31 after a first down. Ten more yards for Murray. We're down to a minute eight. 
Now yeah, Murray just showing you that he's got his at the athleticism. The receivers are trying to get open for him, but no way to turn that those shoulders around and throw that ball smartly. So he just uses his feet. Oklahoma has three timeouts, but still 68 seconds to work with. And you would think three points could possibly do it, but that's not what they're aiming for right now. Give us to Sermon. Sermon takes it on the ground a couple of more yards. Yeah, so if you're thinking, you know, just put position this thing down for field goal, Oklahoma this season has only attempted one field goal. And guess what, guys? It was not through the post. 0 for 1. So, Seibert likely line up for a potential field goal unless they can get a touchdown. So, on the sideline there, getting his leg ready to, to get in there and possibly win this game for Oklahoma. On second and eight. Little option for Oklahoma. Trey Sermon, first down inside the 20. 11 yards for OU. Well, Mr. Black Knight, you run the option. Guess what? We can do that too here at Oklahoma. We've done that a long time before. Trey Sermon with a nice pitch from his quarterback and it's a big game there. So excellent job here running this offense down for the Sooners. Locked down to 22. First and 10 from the Army 18. From Kyler Murray in Oklahoma. And it's Murray off to the races. And he'll slide at the 10 yard line. There's a flag. Oklahoma. No, it's just, I, I think time it's just a timeout. 30 second timeout. Yeah, trying to preserve the clock here. And smart play that time by, by Murray of just sliding and not taking any contact and possibly avoiding the contact there. I misspoke earlier, folks. Cybert had missed a field goal in week one, but last week, obviously, he put three through. So a little correction on our part. We apologize for that misinformation, but uh, he has a chance here if they choose to kick a field goal, put it through and give Oklahoma a 24-21 victory, unless they put this ball in the end zone here with 21, excuse me, with 15 seconds to go. Yeah, one more time out here for Oklahoma, so they can do just about anything, but they're trying to throw it towards that end zone or run it, and kind of an open book here for them. Murray will move to the middle of the field, take a knee, and bring out Austin Seibert. They're gonna take the clock down to call their last time out, so this, the kick will be the last play of this football game. Stop it with two seconds to go. And so a nail-biter tonight in Norman. Number five, Oklahoma, going back and forth with the United States Military Academy. He's 76% for his career. The senior from Belleville, Illinois, from 33 yards for the win. Snap, pull, kick, and he missed it! It's wide left! will take number five Oklahoma to overtime. Well, get some more popcorn, couple of sodas. Here we go. So, let's see what Oklahoma does here in overtime. First and 15 from the 30. The first play of overtime. Play action for Murray. And he's got a wide open Miles tease. Did he step out? Touchdown. Well, kind of a wheel route here by Oklahoma, getting a, a receiver unaccounted for off the outside. He starts in the backfield, watch 87, comes up, kind of jockeys around. Then he gets behind the defender who's in coverage on him. That's Brinson. That's not even a chance to catch him. They're going to look at this and see if he went out, stepped out just near the 10-yard line. Watch his left foot right there on the sideline. That's what they'll, they'll review. After review, the runner stepped out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line. It would be first and goal. Inside the 10. 
Well, nonetheless, it was a good play by Oklahoma because they had kind of shot themselves in the foot with the penalty to start that overtime. Now they're kind of back on schedule, first and 10 just inside the 10-yard line, but this is first and goal inside the 10-yard line because he was just inside of that line. Which changes things. You're on the other side of the 10-yard line. There's a chance for a first down near the goal line. Oklahoma wanting to push this in after having a touchdown taken off the board. I think Murray gives you a lot of options down here with his legs and his throwing ability. Look for him to show up big here with Oklahoma. Trey Sermon in the backfield. C.D. Lamb at the bottom of the screen. Murray, C.D. Lamb, touchdown! Well, just good play design there by Oklahoma and speed win. Speed on the inside with an inside cut here after a fake. The defender not having a chance. C.D. Lamb just runs away from him and an excellent throw by Kyler Murray. They ask Austin Seibert to come out and tack on the extra point, and he has no problem with that. Oklahoma runs two plays in overtime. Basically a touchdown on both. One of them counts, and now Army will have to answer. Well, you just see how Kyler Murray just kind of very lackadaisically goes out there and executes, and that's the thing that's very impressive about him. You know, he's just kind of the, just the opposite of what a Baker Mayfield is on the field. Both of them great quarterbacks in their own right, but Kyler Murray a little bit more on the, you know, perhaps... Not as boisterous as, as Baker would have been in this situation. He'd be getting the crowd into it by now. And as we saw, he did the Thursday night with that Cleveland Brown game. But uh, Kyler Murray taking over the reins of this football team, and he has played well with his opportunities on the field in every game this season. So now it's up to the OU defense. Army will continue to do what it does, and that is pound the football with the fullbacks. Darnell Wolfolk, team captain and senior, takes it for a couple of yards, maybe three. You know, their best plays for Army have come a little bit off of that kind of a sweep look to the outside as they get a, a lead blocker behind the quarterback and then also a pitch man in, in that kind of a, a line coming around the corner. Let's see if they use that to their advantage over the next couple of plays here to see if they can get a chunk or two with some yardage to get a first down and keep moving. They have to score a touchdown here to match Oklahoma to continue this ball game. Second and seven. The option goes to Kalen Holt, but flags will blow the play down. For the snap, false start, offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That was a good-looking play developing, too. Yeah, and this is the, the kind of thing that acts, abs, absolutely kills this style of offense because negative plays, penalties, watch number 88 at the top of the screen. Just gets a little started a little bit early right there. And that's what they're calling, just a little bit of a jitter before the ball is snapped. Now they lose five yards. Tips them definitely off schedule. So second and long here. The ball's not going forward. It's moving backwards. Packed house tonight in Norman. Second and 12. Army trying to answer in overtime. Fred Cooper will throw it and it's incomplete. Looking for Kel Walker. But Khalil Houghton stayed with his man. Yeah, trying to be creative in how they pass the football instead of quarterback coming around there and making that throw Kelvin Hopkins there allowing their speed back coming around Fred Cooper to try to throw that football and wasn't a crisp throw and the receiver wasn't open largely so a couple of downs here now for Army to get a first down to the third and 11 almost 12 yards the 21st third down Army is faced tonight they've converted 12 of the first 20 the pitch to Kalen Holt Holt 
Lowers his shoulder, stopped to the 21. Number nine has showed up so much tonight for Oklahoma's defense, it's not even funny. Kenneth Murray just continues to go sideline to sideline, and that was him catching a more speedy running back out the sideline with a big hit. His tackle total is impressive. 28 tackles tonight. That is a new Oklahoma record. And that's going to rival some national records with his performance tonight. Going back to the year 2000, no one in college football has had 28 tackles in a game. This could be the game on fourth and seven. Hopkins will throw it. It's up in the air. And that'll do it. Intercepted by Cornell Motley. Oklahoma survives. Army pushed them to the brink into overtime. Oklahoma 28-21. Well, it's not the norm here for Army to be throwing the football. That's not their strength. They're a running team. Good pressure that time by the Oklahoma defense. Throws an errant pass, and Motley comes up with the interception to negate any chance Army has to win this ball game in overtime against Oklahoma. Very, very difficult ball game for Oklahoma defensively to slow down a very game Army attack. But offensively, Oklahoma came out firing. They did what they did, needed to do, and you know, that's exactly how they operate. The time of possession factor was huge in this game, Brendan, and Army kind of stole that thunder from Oklahoma, who's typically used to scoring very quickly. Let's go down to the field. Christian Stecco with Lincoln Riley. CT. All right, guys, thanks so much. Coach, what do you learn about your team in a victory like this? Yeah, it's yeah. You know, we're thrilled we made the plays at the end to win it. You know, we didn't play our best ball. Uh, had some key plays in the game on all three sides of the ball that you know we would have some separation. We didn't do it. We got into a dogfight against a really good Army team, but we found a way to win. Yeah, it is difficult to stop this option attack. Talk to me about the resiliency of this defense digging deep to win one more play. Yeah, they hung in there. You know, honestly, after the first series, we played pretty well, other than the fact that we just couldn't get off the field, especially on the long downs. You know, that's when you get those guys in that situation, you got to do a better job. But made some huge plays there at the end. Proud of our fight. We got to get better. You gathered your team right before the overtime. You were emphatic with them. What can a win like this do for your team to springboard you forward? Well, we've worked hard on these scenarios. Red zone and overtime is something that we take pride in as a, as a team, as a program. We knew we were ready for the moment, and we came out and executed on offense, defense, and special teams. Coach, every win is sweet. Enjoy this one. Will do. Thank you. Brendan? Thanks, CT. There are emergency meetings all over the Big 12 tonight <laughs> trying to teach the triple option going forward. As they tested Oklahoma, they gave them everything they had and a tip of the cap to Army, but yeah. number five survives.